Do you know the perfect time to say nothing? Because these guys sure as hell don't. No! Stop thinking for yourself again! Welcome to The Late Night Shot. I'm Scott Black. This is a YouTube channel, and this guy is still president of the U.S. Like, for some reason. A lot of questions to get to, but let's start with our old buddy, Mr. Trump. Trump made two attempts at not being the like, worst thing ever this week. The first was when he was patting himself on the back for all the good things that he's been doing in storm-ravaged areas, saying how everyone loves him and his fantastic work, like he's the one down there cleaning it up and not playing Ben Stiller's role in dodgeball and just rocketing those paper towels into people's faces. But the first blunder comes as Trump said that even he got praise from the president of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, Mr. President, two things. Uh, come real close. One, your fly is down. Oh, you knew that. Oh, yes. I smell the breath mints. Very fresh. No, second. You are the president of the U.S. Virgin Islands. I would have thought the U.S. part was a giveaway. Maybe he thought it was like a cultural thing, like when he kept saying Puerto Rico. Maybe he thinks it's like Us Virgin Islands. You also know that when his staff told him he was going to the Virgin Islands, he was like really excited and then immediately disappointed when he realized that it was nothing like the Miss Universe locker room. The other thing that keeps me up at night is, who was the legend that said that he was the president of the U.S. Virgin Islands? I bet he was like, I'm going to do it. And his friend was like, oh man, don't do it. He's not that dumb. Well. Now the other thing that Trump is in the news for is saying that he's the only sitting president that talks to the family of fallen soldiers. Except, no, that's also not true. Dude, come on. I know you got Google. Unless somehow you managed to get Twitter to work on an old Nokia 3313 and when you're dropping a deuce at 3am it's like, tweet more stupid into the world or play snake. Next time, play snake. So a lot of former White House staff have, that worked under President Obama, Bush and Clinton have said, with all due respect President Trump, we don't respect you because you're a lying asshole. Families of fallen soldiers have also come out to correct the man-child president. And of course Trump took it on the chin and apologized for his <laughs> I tried. No, he called it fake news and went off skipping to his next meeting that will certainly result in the ending of life as we know it. Man, this makes me miss Obama. Hell, this makes me miss Bush. I never thought I'd miss his class and presidential style. In the same situation, he would have been like, Oh, really? Dang a lang, homeboy got some bum information. I'd like to offer some gratitude for your correlation of my mistaken attitude. Good times. Cutting from one brain dead man to another, and if there's one good thing that we can say came from the job of the Weinstein sexual abuse and harassment buffet of assholeness is that more women have been coming out to share their stories of harassment on social media. The phrase Me Too has been used on most platforms for women to stand united against the disgusting acts that happen to them just because of their gender. This of course made some men get uncomfortable and they rushed to plead their innocence, and I get it. Confronted with our partners, family, friends, co-workers, that person you met at an event once and for some reason your Facebook friend stories, it's upsetting. You want to be compared with the filth that did these acts, but boys, dudes, homeboys, you're just going about this all wrong. I'm not saying any of this to absolve myself from anything. I'm a guy, and while I've never sexually abused anyone, I've no doubt made a joke while doing stand-up or a comment in general life that made someone uncomfortable. And while the intent wasn't there, the effect was, and I can honestly say I'm sorry. The correct way to handle this mass share was to listen with your ears and your hearts and give support to those brave enough to share and be there for some, some kind of spear for those that still suffer in silence so maybe they don't have to. No, some dildos instead made it about them and tried to plead their innocence while bringing up other issues. Like, what? There's so many issues in this world, but when you try to halt a conversation about one because you want to shoehorn another, you're stopping the conversation and progress. Not to mention that the topic of sexual harassment and abuse where women just want to be heard and you're not friggin' listening. While we can't change what happened, we can try to each be better. And for some of the men out there, being closed-minded about this all, just closing that, be a great step. Speaking of others that could use a little less of this and a little bit more of this, it's time for America's NRA to spout some beautiful propaganda. In a, an article posted on their site, americasfirstfreedom.org, they posted a piece titled, Gun Ownership Skyrockets in Australia. In it, they reference that Australia as being one of the shining examples that people use for tough gun control laws and that it's not working, saying that gun ownership in Australia is bigger than ever and that it's proof that gun control just hasn't worked. Oh man, <clears throat> here it comes. I think I'm gonna, yep, here it comes. Facts. Okay, numbnuts. 
you did the classic Facebook thing that someone's nan does and only read the headline. The NRA got this article from uh, an article in the Sydney Morning Herald titled Record Gun Sales Bring Australia's Firearm Arsenal to the Highest Level Since Port Arthur Massacre. It's a catchy title, and seemingly all they needed to write their cutting-edge piece. If they did this pesky thing that I like to do called reading, they would have seen that the guns in question aren't the Rambo-type variety, but yet of single shot. Not only that, but these guns have to be imported because no guns are actually made here and are mostly being imported by gun collectors. All guns have to be declared to customs and the Australian Federal Police. The owners of the guns also not only have to have a membership, but actively participate in shooting clubs with training sessions four times a year for a single shot rifle and ten times a year for a handgun. Even with some folks having more guns, gun violence in Australia has continued to dive and we still have had oh, zero mass shootings since 1996. And even with all the guns, households with guns make up less than 10% of the ownership, meaning that most guns are kept at shooting clubs. Is it a perfect system? No. Is it better than yours? Oh yeah. One more small detail, and this might just be me splitting hairs, but I think it demonstrates the ignorance and blatant misinformation made by these folks. In their article, published Tuesday, October 17, 2017, writer Mark Chestnut, who is also the editor, wrote, Interestingly, a feature published over the weekend in the Sydney Morning Herald reports that Australians now own more guns than they did before the country's mass confiscation. I will give credit to Mark for providing a link to this past weekend's article. Oh wait, um... I know there's a time zone issue, but I didn't know the difference between Australia and the US was one year, five months, and 19 days. It's like you don't even have faith your readers would read the article. Well, <laughs> you f***ing didn't, so I guess you were spot on. There, of course, is no mention also of the uh, current firearm amnesty that we had in Australia that saw another 51,461 guns handed to the government on a constant vigilance of our police and government to keep us safe. Oh, and the government also threw in for a kicker tougher penalties for anyone caught smuggling guns into Australia. But hey, who are we to let these pesky facts get in the way of your narrative, Mark? <laughs> oh, and uh, you can suck on these chestnuts. That's all the time we have for this week. Be, uh, be sure to like and share and subscribe. If we can grow this channel by just one or two people a week, I would be a happy boy. Until next time, I've been me. You've been you. We've all been people. Hashtag everybody poops. Bye. No! Stop it.